Hello, everybody. I'm Jessica Alstrom, the creator of Quantum Fitness and the Quantum Method. And this is the second video of a series that I am putting together to help you understand a little bit more about quantum biology and biohacking. Specifically, today, we're going to be talking about how you, the me, myself, and I, actually manifest your reality with just the me, myself, and I. You know, we tend to believe that we need something outside of us, a person, a place, a thing, to help us co-create our desires. We believe that it's going to take relationships and codependency if we're really going to be successful and create a life of wholeness. And really, the fundamental truth of that is a lie. You are sitting in a body that is the most advanced quantum biocomputer that exists. You literally, within this you, is a universe. And that universe has everything that is required to be able to allow you through desire and vision, imagination, intention, inspired action, surrender, to completely manifest anything and everything that your heart or the truth of you is. So I thought today I would pull out my chakra balls that we use a lot in quantum fitness, and I would share with you how exactly you do this. I'll also share with you how we are being misled by earlier childhood truths that taught us away from this deep intuitive knowing. Okay, so really, me, myself, and I is all you need. And this demonstration is hopefully going to answer some long-term questions that you've had about law of attraction. It's going to answer some questions about karma. It's going to answer some questions about what is biohacking. It's going to understand, help you understand questions about kundalini, chakras, you know, your brain, your body, and, and who you are inside within this universe that make up this universe, okay? And I'll hopefully explain it as simply as I can because ultimately fundamental truths are always simple when we really uncover all of the um, information that is just kind of clouding up the truth. I feel there's a lot of information out there and sometimes it can be contradicting. So if I say anything today that goes against a belief system or kind of hits you the wrong way, throw it out. This is just a, a visual for you to maybe come full circle with a holistic understanding of who you are, why you are, how you are, when you are, and bring you a little bit more understanding of what you're truly, truly capable of, no matter what you've been through, no matter what kind of body you're sitting in right now, what kind of money you have in your bank account. From this moment and every moment, you are and have the ability to create your own reality. The difference between creating your own reality and, and deliberately and creating your own reality, reality by default is nothing more than you have been separated from you, okay? So today I wanna use the visual of your chakra systems to kind of help you understand your solar system that you have within you. And these are, you know, named differently for different belief systems. But basically what a chakra is, it's, a, it's an energy satellite. And it is composed of all the elements of who you are, genetically, akashically, um, mentally, physically, etherically, spiritually, um, emotionally. And each one of these energy systems or energy satellites has a important job to help you focus, hold on to information, um, retrieve information. And like a vortex or how all the planets seem to work together up in our little Milky Way, your satellites or planets that 
make up your solar system of your universe are also attempting to do the same. This is why we have retrogrades and that's why we have um, these cosmic things happening that we use astrology, numerology to help guide us back to uh, the map of how to put ourselves back together once we have been disconnected. So if we would follow and flow and allow the planetary orbits that are above to sync up with ours, we would find a lot more harmony in allowing our desires to unfold through the manifestation of the me, myself, and I. So let's talk about that little concept. In different religions and backgrounds, it's called different things. Mind, body, soul, right? It's like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, in today's discussion, to keep it really simple and neutral, we're going to call it the me, the myself, and the I, all right? and for now, let's leave these other guys out of it so we can kind of just explain our, our meaning here. Move that away so it's not distracting. So this idea is your entire base point of the materialization of you. This is you materialized. This is you matter, okay? The matter of you. This is the I am matter. This is the accumulation of all that you have ever been and ever will be with all of the potential within it in a material form. This is the body that you're sitting in. This is the family that you have created or manifested or been born into. This is the environment you live. This is the economic structure that you find yourself in. And this is the belief systems that are attached to all of that information, all right? Right here, the material of you, I matter, right? Now this is the myself, and this is kind of the fundamental balance point that anchors in the divine connection between all that is. This is the connection that connects you to nature, and other people and information through the cosmos. This is your telepathic, completely neutral, which means does not reside in black or white, wrong or right, remains in a very androgynous state, not female, not masculine, but all there is, is right here. This is your connection, your neutral, non-judgmental, unconditionally loving connection to all that is, including yourself. In this kind of metaphor, we uh, understand that this is the, the sole idea of the I am embodied. And the myself is the container itself because it is the house. That is the house of all the satellites that connects us to all different parts of the universe outside of ourselves, or at least the version of the universe that we project to help us understand the universe inside of us, all right? Or within us or all of us, okay? So I'm going to be kind of explaining alchemy today as well. So this idea of this is your connection we represent in our quantum method as the myself. This is myself as everything, all right? Now this is your crown chakra, right? We've got your root chakra, we've got your heart chakra, we've got your crown chakra. But in this conversation, this is going to represent the true I am of all of you. That is basically all of the particle fragments of your souls and spirits combined. That is all complete. There is no kind of summary here. This is the complete you you in verse, this is all of you in this little idea of the I am. Some of you recognize it from the higher self, the higher consciousness, the source energy, right? Some of you see this as the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter really how you see it. And for this demonstration, just realizing that although I am 
demonstrating this as a separate aspect. It isn't. It's just different parts of the same whole. And in order for us to be incarnated into density, we have to slow this way down and kind of put some brakes on it and allow each part of ourselves to have a different filter, a different job, a different expression to allow us to be able to have all there is in an innovative living space and have a personality or an identity or a focal point or even desire. So we're using these different satellite systems within us to slow the vibration down, kind of like damming a river, in order to have a time and space reality where we can think thoughts, where we can decide, where we can choose, where we can observe. And this is how we have cleverly, through quantum biology and physics, been able to separate the idea of our wholeness, not through separation, but from different perspectives and different ideas to be able to create the experience of the whole here in physical reality, all right? So we have the me, the myself, and the I, all right? So now I'm gonna bring in our other satellite systems so you can see how this works and you can also see how this doesn't work, okay? So this idea of the me, the myself, and the I all have helpers in between, really express that part of the whole of you. These are our expressions. These are our, our kind of our, our work, our thoughts, our creativity, our ability to demonstrate, our ability to express ourselves, our ability to see what is there, what is not there yet, what could be there, and what lies underneath the surface. This helps the me, myself, and I fully be able to express itself in a holistic pattern. Your life itself is working in conscious, physical, and super conscious seven-year cycles. And for that, we have seven different expression points within us, all right? So we said this is the I am matter. I matter. I am a material body. I am spirit embodied. I am real. All right. And in order for this expression of this I am to be able to express itself from an idea, from an imagination, from a vision, be able to bring that into reality, just like it has become. How do I create my imagination into matter? Well, that's going to require me from a very kind of masculine material. Masculine is another word for matter, structure, right? And it's not necessarily with the definition of a man, but the idea of the density, support, or structure. All right. This is embodied masculine as feminine is just etheric, right? Or creator, creative becomes real. So this idea of birthing this I matter. And so I shall be, I shall create, I shall become more of myself we will use this sacral chakra. It is defined as your creative chakra, your creative center, your sensual or sexual center, which to me, if you understand birthing an idea and bringing it to life, then your sexuality or your creativity is just literally one of the same. It is separated in thought and belief systems here in this environment, but ultimately your ability to become masculine and feminine in order to pr produce a baby from a thought, which was anything that you would want to create in your reality is 
then co-created with you, this part of you. So this part being dominantly feminine, yet masculine in its ability to become and create with this divine, mostly masculine part of you, right? And I don't mean man, I mean matter. Then we bring the creative energy in, the inspiration, the ideas, the flow, the, the building of you. Okay, I am real, but I could be more. I matter, so I could make things that matter. I could create things that matter. I could share my matter with others. And so in this part of you, I create. I create the matter, what matters, who I am in material form, I create more of myself, all right? And from that birthing of creativity sparks motivation. Motivation, desire to act, energy to act, a focal point to move. From this solid idea of I matter and I create matter, I begin to demonstrate. This is your solar plexus. This is your I demonstrate my creative matter. All right. And as this flows and moves up, and I matter and I create what matters to me. I demonstrate what matters to me and matters doesn't mean importance. It means focus, what I am focused on for me. I begin to demonstrate. And as I begin to demonstrate, the energy moves through me and it moves into the connection of all that is. And then other people can see me, hear me, share with me in what I am demonstrating what I am creating and what I am being in the material version of all that I am. Okay. And from connection that isn't about marketing or selling, about just being, you send a broadcast into every fiber of the universe from a breath from a heartbeat that has the tiniest bit of DMT in every creative spark that you utilize loving hormones that are created with all of you to send out a signal to everyone who resonates or aligns with this connection to this, all right? So, this is where you are seen and heard. This is where you are witnessed because up until this point, you are the witness of you. You are creating with you. When you move out of the creative energy of imagination and you start to bring it to life, pen to paper, paintbrush to canvas, blueprint for that next business, that podcast that's birthing in you, the book that's sitting right here because it matters, not to anyone else, not because it's the best thing in the world, but because it matters to you, because it feels like a way that you can be more of yourself, then it will flow naturally through here. And when this naturally flows through here, you will find an audience that can hear the voice or expression of your physical soul's vibration, the tone of your voice, the feel of your body, the expression of the music or the way that you move, the style that you paint, the essence of your delivery is artistically delivered through your throat chakra, all right? And through this, you are expressing yourself holistically from the things that matter and you are becoming and demonstrating and connecting to. And you are able from this point then to even see more. Because when you are clearly flowing in this creative process, 
and you are moving this energy from the I am all there is to I am material version of all that is in a living space, in a collective experience, then I can see what is not yet real. I can see what I can create. I can see what I choose to see. I can see behind this entire process. And I can see that this is potential. I can see potential materialized in others. I can see blockages in myself and others. I can see, not with my physical eyes, but with this divine connection of the true of I am, all of you, holistically. And when that is moving from physical matter through the emotional space to the energetic space to the cosmic etheric space, we move in and tap in and turn on or align with a bigger part of ourselves. So this would be the idea of the you sitting behind the, the video game, right? Sitting on the couch, watching your archetype in the skin you have chosen, play the video game, the bigger part of you that knows that this particular incarnation is a fun virtual reality simulation for you to be able to choose your own reality based on expressing all of you in a holistic, slowed down, density blended, masculine, feminine, yin, yang, time, space, choice, thought, feeling, expression of yourself. All right. And that is the full understanding of the true I am, I am, I am all, and I matter, right? Some of us have some worth issues. So what happens is we start off pretty little believing this, right? We cry when we're hungry without apology. We have physical bodily expressions without judging or worrying that it's necessarily wrong. We cry when we feel a disconnection of our own truth or pain in our bodies or hunger. We ask for what we need or want. We share openly what we have access to of what we know about ourselves. We ask questions to know more of who we are. And usually right here, and usually this is let's say 99.99999% if you are having a material expression, this is taught that you need to separate right here. Why do we need to separate right here? Because maybe sometimes your creativity isn't your parents' financial abundance yet. Maybe this creativity is such an out of the box thinking that no one around you can understand. Maybe this creativity and this creative process of you using your masculine and feminine energy to create more matter isn't appropriately seen. The things you say or ask or need or express may somehow create a discord in someone else's perspective that is bigger than you, that has been here longer than you, who makes up the rules, who funds your existence, who is playing the universe to you until you fully remember who you are. This is where our guidance teaches us away from our manifestation abilities, not necessarily on purpose, but because this process happened to your parents too, it is what they know, it is what they believe, it is what they teach, not necessarily from a place of truth, but, but of a place of survival and safety. It's not safe for you to create in the way that you believe you can create. It's not safe for you to go places or do things. So right here, the biggest separation that we have is the word no. 
no, don't think that, don't feel that, don't choose that, don't say that, don't love that. Don't hurt me by being yourself. Don't take from me what I need. No, you cannot have what you need to create yet or ever. And the bigger this separation is in your first seven years, the more that you will feel like I matter is now searching for something to help it matter. It begins to search for this energy outside of itself. It searches for someone to help it create, help it become real, help it matter. Do I matter? Am I allowed to be loved? Am I worth it? With this separation, this, this I am matter becomes me or I don't matter. And from that I or me in this small version begin to search away from myself for things that will make me matter, help me be successful so I will matter. Find a space that makes me feel like I deserve to be there and uses its thoughts of creativity to use and find others' creativity, okay? This is where kind of the inner child gets separated from the idea that it already is complete and it is just demonstrating art from its completion. You aren't here to learn at all. You're here to connect. You're here to become. You're here to be a holistic version of the biggest part of you in the smallest package you could create by slowing down the energies like dams to slow down a river, but all working in harmony to create your focal point, all right? So this separates. This is your root trauma. So all the trauma that you believe that you have right now in your sexuality or your creativity, in your ability to have motivation or procrastination or laziness or whatever, is not necessarily a trauma here it's the trauma here, because this is the micro of the macro. This is who you believe you are. This is who you believe you're not. And this is who you're allowed to be when you are separate from this, all right? When this becomes separate from your creativity, your creativity becomes very separate from your ability to demonstrate your own desires of creativity or expression. And let me give you an example of that. If you ever ever seen like Bob Ross paint a picture and it's just effortless and he's just in the flow and it's just it's such a pure connection that he has with the the colors and the canvas. What he's thinking up here pretty much always comes out through here. All right. And now this right and this is connected to this. So when I don't believe that I am good at creating or not allowed to create or creating isn't going to pay my bills or the creative process that I've had, I've failed at creating relationships. I've failed at creating, you know, children that are hurting. I have failed at, then there's going to be a disconnect right here too. Like thinking of dancing and then getting up and your body's like, we don't know how to do that. Or holding a paintbrush and going, gosh, he makes this look so easy. And, you know, painting and it's a stick figure. It's not what's up here or what's in here or in here. It's not expressing itself the way that you know that you could do that right here. And because you're not pen to paper or paintbrush to canvas exactly as your heart desires or your thought desires or your gut is showing you what you are, you feel separate from your own demonstration of creativity of who you really are. And that begins to put this connection as a scary place to be. Now, the only way that I will feel a connection is if there is a need behind it. 
So now I use my demonstration, my creativity, and I use my material body to try my best to attach because I cannot connect to anything or everything that feels like I matter. This is the difference between a connection and attachment. When you have walls and separation between these important satellite systems that connect the all that I am here, we from pain have built a solid wall around this connection to all that is. And so now we feel separate from all that is. And we search for that one person or that one creative outlet that still has a flow connected to it that we haven't completely shut down and we give all of our energy to it. The person that feels like home, we give all of our energy to it. But because it's coming from a place of I need to connect versus I connect, I creatively demonstrate and express myself. I demonstrate my creativity and my material version of my I am through connection to all that is. I begin to hide. I begin to shut down. I begin to obsess. And I begin to find things that are addicting that make me feel in a tiny moment or for five minutes or 20 minutes or maybe five hours or three months that this is all connected. So once this is in pain and it is no longer safe to connect or feels that it isn't seen or heard, safe or loved, then of course your expression isn't going to come out as the real you. It's going to come out as the parroted belief system version of what you're allowed to be up until this point, which means that if you have a lot to say from this perspective, you might not be able to say it. You might not be able to share it or no one around you can seem to hear it, all right? This is where we start to feel very alone in relationships and very separate from our own truth, all right? Now, obviously, all of this space begins to build this block point or this filter around what you're really seeing. And now what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of separation. You're seeing a lot of pain. You're seeing a lot of scary things. You're seeing a lot of things that you don't want to remember from the past happening in your now. And because this becomes an unsafe space, then, of course, what else is out there? What else could be bigger than this feeling of separation? Because this now must be separate. This must be a man in the sky or a spirit that knows more than me, that has more than me. And this is deciding what I get to be. So I need to be good. I need to be successful. I need to have a lot of money in order to get this connection. I need to learn my spiritual gifts. I need to manifest my soulmate to feel this. Well, this is what happens when, you're, when you are separate from the different fractal satellite energy streams that make up the crystal energy that when you hold through the light, looks like a rainbow. This is all of me. And this is alchemy. When this is together, you are creating matter from all of this different satellite streams. Just like in order for me to text someone, I am using a satellite as a connective source through my cell phone, right? I am using a creative outlet to demonstrate what is in my heart through a pen and a paper or a video. I am using all these different elements of energetic spectrums to create a holistic idea of who I am so that I may share the uniqueness of all that I have ever been and all I could potentially become. So when this separates, you guys, this is how you need people, places, things. This is where you feel like you have ideas but you cannot find the people that will help bring this to life. When this is separate, 
this is weak. It's blocked by I can't create by myself or I don't have the ideas or I don't have the co-creator outside of me, right? So when this shuts down, we begin to move over here. And now this is alone. Searching for this in someone else and something else. Okay. If I don't have me, I will try to use you. I will try to use a substance that feels like me. I will try to live in a home that feels like me. I will try to drive a car that feels like me. I will try to find a partner that feels like me. But because it's birth out of separation and you are missing six important pieces of manifestation, the ability to manifest this into this, then you're going to find yourself 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. Bittersweet manifestations, people that feel like this creative spark inside of you, but actually leave you all alone, rejected and abandoned. This becomes rejected and abandoned. This becomes rejected and abandoned. Your actions aren't appreciated. The work you do do isn't seen and heard. You're afraid to live out your dreams because you're afraid of failure. You're afraid to love what you need to love because it's who you are. You connect with the safest things you can find that don't have negative stories attached to it, like nature and animals and babies, all right? This becomes passive aggressive, okay? Oops, I might've had this wrong. This is a turquoise and this is our truth, right? Gets mixed up, but it's all the same. We begin to not speak our truth, but a version of our truth that is laced with anger and resentment and judgment because we have not been allowed to be ourselves. When we see people being ourselves, we are triggered by it, all right? Because the essence of our ability to demonstrate is not allowed. So then, of course, what you see isn't really what you want to see. And you are not getting the direct sight from your higher guidance. So you're needing a broker, a middleman, a practitioner to help you see what you can't see. Then, of course, you're going to need a guru. You're going to need a God. You're going to need a spirit guide to tell you who you are, why you are, and how do I get these gifts? How do I speak up? How do I love unconditionally when I've never been loved unconditionally? How do I show up and demonstrate my creativity if I've failed 10 times? How do I trust love and trust my own creativity and trust my own gut? And am I even worth it? And am I allowed? Am I good enough? Do I matter? So right here, guys, when we're looking at the concept of biohacking, we are not biohacking, you know, just your energy field or your emotions through therapy. What we actually have to biohack is this entire connection. We have to bring this back into unity before you try to unify with a new idea, a new job, a new person, a new place, or a new thing because this is going to be bittersweet. In the end, you will feel abandoned and rejected. Your work that could be absolutely brilliant you would never even be able to share, show, or receive your accolades. You will never truly find the person that most represents their version of all that is. See, when you manifest separately from yourself, you manifest people, places, and things that have been separated from themselves. So what you're getting, asking someone to see you as the wholeness of what you are, is you're only able to manifest someone who doesn't believe they matter and want you to show them that they matter. This is why love in the first three months is effortless because it is all about that reconnection, because you get to feel all of you. You get to have the sex, you get to create together, you get to demonstrate and go places together. You get to love each other. You get to say what's on your mind. You get to express, you get to see the potential of the relationship. 
you get to see how much you are feeling everything. And from that, you feel that this is one. But within about three months, you'll notice that this without this is going to attract this without their that. And they are going to start getting upset with who you are here because they don't remember, remember that they are separate from themselves. See, when you become this solo, you do not know you are solo. You believe that you are still connected to all of this because there is a trace element of this, 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 this inside of here. But this is like walking around needing someone's hot spot in order to have a flow, in order to be on, in order to be seen and heard and work. This without a hot spot is like a phone without a Wi-Fi connection, has all the data, has all the potential, all the ability to create its reality or have a experience, but it doesn't have a Wi-Fi connection. So all it really is, is the memories or your pictures, the apps that are pre-installed that work without Wi-Fi like games. And this is why it feels like when people are disconnected, all they do is play games and they're constantly focused on their past memories and the memories of their past create their future memories that they walk into. And they don't know that they don't have this connection. Because when you have this connection, this is your Kundalini rising. This is activating the flow of your own Wi Fi that does not need a hotspot, that does not need a battery from food or sleep or energy, that is becoming embodiment of this. It is practicing, preparing, playing, pretending, asking deciding, choosing, observing its own expansion of this. So this is what you're always getting pushed back to when you get your heart broken. When your creative efforts are disregarded, you're getting pushed back together. It feels like a dark night of the soul. It feels like punishment, but it is pushing you back home to yourself because basically we all know we are our own hero. We came no one will ever truly see us until we have this connection, All right? This is the body that houses the I am matter. This is your creativity and your emotional connection to your ability to bring forth the essence of your spirit. This is how your body will demonstrate those things. This is your heart connection to all that is. So in our biohacking program, we have to start here, not here. Where I'm taking you into a deep meditation to show you how to lucid dream and travel. Because what happens is the me, myself, and I, because they've been separated from each other, but all a unified core structure of themselves, are trying to find each other, okay? So we're gonna focus here at Quantum Fitness on the me, myself, and I. The way that we bring you from I don't matter to I matter is to reconnect you back to yourself, which means that anything that is not in alignment with this connection is physically removed from the physical body. This is the idea of the physical body. This is the idea of your neutral androgynous body. This is the masculine feminine aspect of you embodied, but predominantly in a physical body, your density and you matter, all right? What you do, what you feel and what you are, all right? So over here, when this connection is severed, but this strong, connection of what you truly are starts to feel like it's offline or disconnected. We are constantly seeking this heart connection so we can have this whole connection. We are constantly seeking outside of ourselves, people, places, and things to find this. All right. So what happens is we find this 
but it doesn't feel like me. It feels like truth. It feels like relief. It feels like whole, but it doesn't necessarily feel like that is me speaking to me. It feels like someone is speaking for me in my behalf. Someone is listening to me. I've heard so many times over the last 12 years, Jess, it's like you're reading my mind. It's like you're speaking directly to me. So my job has become to be the surrogate of this so that you may remember that I'm just your mirror, that I'm not your guru or your guide. I'm just reflecting back what you are feeling that you won't allow yourself to receive yet. And through this process of therapy and quantum healing and world travel and biohacking training, I have attempted to reflect as best as I possibly could in my own version of this reality that you are here to be your own guru, that your reality is your reflection point. Your projection is the story that you believe and to help you come home to yourself so that you may stream a free Wi-Fi signal that is a connection of all of this energy, blood, plasma, bone, density, genetics, and all that makes up you will begin to turn on the physical manifestation of this part called the pineal gland and the Wi-Fi connection stream from here, 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 will turn on this little seed nut-like part of your brain that isn't liquid and it isn't solid and it is a plasma not from this planet that sparks a billion crystals into life and this and this become one. And it is then where you will know everything, where you came from, why you're here, where you're going. You will be able to create from a thought and bring it into life with ease. You'll demonstrate with no judgment or contraction. You'll just show up. You'll be at the right places at the right times with the right people because this is connected to everything that is a vibrational match to how you are expressing yourself. And of course, you will be able to sing and tell and talk and write your truth to share this connection. And you will be able to see what others aren't ready to see, or you'll see how to help others with this you'll see how others feel. So you will be empathic and compassionate. And then of course, because these are no longer separate, you're not looking up to the sky, praying for help. You become your answered prayer. You become your soul's mate. You become oneness of all the color spectrums, the different alchemies, the aspects of you that make up all of you, the alchemist. This is how you create your reality. So when you need anything, money, help, support, to be seen, heard, loved, take stock that all that's happening is that this needs to come home to this. Easier said than done because of years of deprogramming away from who you truly are, years of belief systems that you shouldn't even go near yourself, Years of praying to a God outside of you. Years of not trusting what you see or what you do. Not trusting your own heart. Not trusting your own decisions. Not trusting your own roadmap or guidance. Doesn't make this easy to just reconnect. So usually what we do is we attract a big event that is going to force us back to ourselves. A near death experience, an illness, an accident, a bankruptcy, a breakup. Every negative in this universe is designed to be a shortcut for you to get back to you because you wouldn't attract negatives if this was connected. 
This is a positive charge that connects with all there is. When this becomes separate, negatives and positives start to have different charge points, different activations, different trigger points. The trigger is designed to get your attention that you're disconnected that there is trauma or pain that is built a wall and a dam between this connection. So our job here at Quantum Fitness <laughs> is to get into the physical body completely. Bone, blood, marrow, plasma, cells, muscles, brains, hearts, and unwind, detox, and reboot the system. This never really needs help. We just have to take the walls down around it in safe space where you feel that vulnerability isn't weakness, but a strength. And you will feel your strength because you will have the power of your body back. You will have your creative stream back without someone else's inspiration. And you will know who you are. So you will allow yourself to be loved for the way that you love. This part is easy, okay? This is the part we give most of our focus because it feels the best. This is where we meditate all day long and we you know, go completely vegan hoping that we can let go of our density. This is where we have tried all different types of things to reconnect to the dense part of ourselves. But in essence, not saying that any of those things are bad, by the way, meditation, beautiful, veganism for you, if it's for you, beautiful, whatever works for you, works for you, as long as it's not just one thing you're using to connect all of it, because you are body, mind, soul, you cannot rehabilitate, reboot, or put the system back in alignment with just emotional therapy, or just meditation, or just body work, or just a detox. Because when you do that from a separated place and you begin to feel the pain of this disconnection through the detox, through the fever, through the breakup, through the loss of a job, you're going to think you're doing something wrong. Because this is your, this is your conscious awareness of yourself, all right? And it also is the house of your unconscious self, the part of you that you don't know. You don't hear that tone of voice you just spoke. You didn't know you were channeling your mother. You didn't know you brought pain from other lives. You didn't know that. What you know is that your childhood sucked or whatever. So this is the unconscious and the subconscious part of you. And it is very dense and it has a physical weight. I'm waiting for my life to start. I'm carrying weight in my physical matter, which makes me not matter because I have to wait on others and I'm heavy. I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm alone. I don't belong and I'm not allowed, all right? This is your idea of that subconscious. I know I can have love, I can be it, I can feel it, I remember it. And this is your super conscious self that is all that you will ever be, complete. No work needing to be done here. It's fully expressed you needs to be put that together very specifically. So in by in quantum fitness, there are seven aspects of you. And so we have seven steps. We have seven different rooms that you will enter so that we may focus on each part of you as the star, as the important part of you to make each part of you remember who you are to bring this back to life, to allow this demonstration to be in a safe environment, to tear down the walls around your heart, to let you express yourself in a safe, creative space through inspiration from this part of you. To see, to know, to use your body to trust and guide itself into its further ability to create more of itself. See, you become more of yourself, but you become more pain, you become heavier, you become blocked, you become stuck, you become cynical, you become afraid, you become humiliated, shamed, guilt, you become resentment and alone. You were here to become more, but not those things. 
You are here to be creative and adventurous and loving and sharing and seeing and knowing. So obviously, I have learned this the hard way. <laughs> I've known all of this for years, but we want to keep trying to get it right with people, places, and things. And so you're saying, Jess, well, you are a people, a place, a thing. Your space is a thing. Your program is a thing. You are a person. But like I said, my job, ever since 2009, somehow, I woke up to my mission that my job was to figure out how to demonstrate and help bring this connection back into alignment of you. And while I've been working to create a way for you, I have been guinea pigging myself and I have been taking myself through extreme conditions that we have here that are not scary at all, but different because we're using the alchemy process. We're using every form or every modality that we possibly could use to reboot the system from I don't matter to I matter. So whether you're 47 or 25 or 79, time doesn't exist when this is in alignment. Time very much exists when you're alone. You're running out of time. You've tried everything. Nothing works. You've spent all of your money. You've got nothing left to give me, Jess. Well, sit on it. Take stock of who this could be. You may not have it right now, but when you ask, it's given. And you just need to soften back into yourself for a minute. Sit with yourself. Remember who you were as a creative child. Remember how free you felt at one point to demonstrate or what you feel you can demonstrate when you're alone. What you love about this world and yourself. What you have to say and share that might not be important to anyone else but matters to you. What you want to see that you know is there. And what you want to become that you have been inspired by is going to happen here with you now. It's the time. You're in the rude awakening. The unconscious part of you is waking up and it's not very fun. You're realizing that no place, person, or thing is going to bring this connection back into your unlimited power. Because when this connects, right, if you were left alone in hot childhood and nurtured and loved and and challenged, right, my outfit, challenged, then through your genius of your own challenge, but safe feeling, you would have come back together or never separated in the first place. Imagine what you would have created. Imagine what you have been able to demonstrate of who you were. It's not too late because when you get back to here, your energy is flowing the currency of a brain wave or an energy frequency called theta, which helps you age very, very slowly until you move into gamma, which is I am, and therefore you are controlling time and space. You are controlling who and what you are. I have a scale here at Quantum Fitness that I, I have everyone get on, not to take score of how much you weigh, right? I don't care how much you believe you don't matter, which makes you full of matter. What I care is what age your body believes you are. So when I do your diagnostic here, I look for your cellular age, the frequency that runs through that your body believes it is. And I have had kids in here that are 21 years old and their cellular age is 27. I've had athletes in here that are 40, but their age is 47 or 42 or 43. Isn't it funny how we feel so much younger than our bodies are when we start doing this work? Because we remember that that connection is no time, no space, no gender, no, no, no age, no background, no letters after your name. It's just love. And when you return to this, right, you wake this up first, usually, oh, I, I, know, I know that I feel connected to this. You start to wake this up. But sometimes this isn't strong enough to wake up all of this by itself, all right? So we're going to use the frequencies to recalibrate this particular satellite system back into alignment, which means we have to remove the pain in your body. We have to use, remove the memories that are holding on to you. I'm not brainwashing you. I'm putting you back through your assistance to your factory settings. 
I cannot make you anything that you weren't born to be because you have free will and I'm not that important. I'm not that special. All I can do is herd this energy back into the same room and make it so that it is all the same frequency of I matter because I am. And your creativity and your demonstration and your heart have the soul song inside of it. This is the flute and this is the drums. And when these are all discombobulated, it is like a band that does not know how to play together and nobody wants to hear your song. But when you are all together, you are a symphony that people will pay to hear you demonstrate what matters and what you are reflected in all that you are. This is the symphony of your soul. And when this is together, you inspire the world by just being yourself. You get paid to demonstrate your own creativity. You get to be an example. You are free to love. You can express yourself and you can bring this to a very dark time and a very dark place right now where we are here to show the world that we matter. And if we matter, they matter. And bring this 22 year that represents duality squared off into non-duality. All right. So no, I'm not going to hurt you here. You're already hurting. Trust me. You can't fail here. Every day you don't connect to yourself, you are failing yourself. Am I going to make all of your hopes and dreams come true? I'm going to allow you to be connected to yourself so you may demonstrate that yourself while I hold space. I've got the tools for each one of these parts of you here. Not only are they here, they're actually here and here. So I am fully mobile. And from my base home in Kansas City, which is the heart chakra of the United States, I, with a couple of very large, large bags and help from international connections, I'm going to be taking a little journey to Spain and Ireland to do our week intensive biohacking course or therapy sessions because you guys might not be able to get to leave the US without a vaccine, but I can get to you. And I am showing up because I know that you matter, because I matter. And I know what's waiting for us. This is gonna create your playground, your playroom, your play friends, your playmates, your creations, your adventure, your money, your time, your health. It's not from me. It's just me being able to see, see who you are that you can't see yet. So I get to play mom and dad and space holder. And I get to play mad scientist here while we reinvent this idea of healing and understand that this isn't a program you're coming to heal from. When you move away from quantum fitness, there is no rest time. There is no post-operation downtime. When we reconnect with this, your job is to live. Remember that you're here to thrive, not survive. You will not have to heal. You just have to remember yourself. Remember, put yourself back together. So this is the idea of manifestation and biohacking and how you are here to create your own reality. Now, when this is aligned, I'll throw this out because I get this question. Jess, you said I won't need anything ever again outside of me. I want things outside of me. I want to have those things. So I won't need money. I won't need a job. I won't need a creative outlet. Of course, you will want those things because you are those things. See, your desire comes from desire to express itself wholly. Your desire isn't, I want something so I can express myself wholly. The car you want is because it feels like you. The home you want is because it feels like you. The house isn't going to let you be you. You won't get the house until you feel like you. And if you get the house before you feel like you, you won't be able to keep it. Same with the boyfriend, same with the job, same with the idea. All right. 
So this is the expression of all there is. And because this is the expression of all there is, it works through people, places, and things. This is I need, okay? When this is here, this is I want. And this is I am. I am this home. Therefore, the universe will bring it to me. And the universe is me. It's my connection. It's my Wi-Fi. It's my credit card to the universe that I can put things into my cart and they will be delivered to me through people and places and things that are connected to my frequency, my belief systems, my level of attraction, like attracts like. So if you're attracting other people that feel disconnected from themselves, you might want to look closer at certain things. If you cannot squeeze together the money to demonstrate who you are, you might want to look at that connection, the disconnection in your seven-year cycle. You can do this on your own. You don't need me. And my program isn't the only program that can do this, by the way. I just don't know of it. This is what I know. This is what I've become. This is what I am sharing with you that matters to me. And because it's a reflection of who I desire to be that I am. All right. Thank you for taking the time to sit with me and, and, and watch this demonstration. We use our chakra balls a lot in class. They are made of hemp, which is a, a material that is completely um, transcendence, which means that if I use this as a, as a comfort and some of my inner child work, I'm not going to put my pain in here like I would with flaxseed. Flaxseed is very absorbent, all right? So we're using hemp here and we're using, we're using uh, flower essences to activate your body's ability to respond, react, and see who it truly is through smell and sight and sound. So we use these quite a bit in our biohacking sessions. And it is kind of our inner child's um, stress relievers and toys and safe spaces because the inner child's love language is, is touch and share. When I share who I am, I love you. And when I touch you or you touch me, I know that I am real and that I'm safe. All right. Thank you guys for sharing me. And I look forward to our next video.